This is a video about adding an optical drive to an Asus F551M laptop. You might have bought one of these that doesn't include the optical drive, so here's how to add one. And also this information might apply to other models that are similar. Of course, the first thing you want to do is turn the laptop over, remove the screws out of the back. Make sure that you lay them out in a pattern that you'll remember which holes they go in because the screws are different sizes. They're not necessarily interchangeable. Of course, open up the laptop. You want to use a plastic tool, like this is a tool that's for taking phones and things apart. You could use a guitar pick or something also to kind of just run under the edge. Just pop it open, you'll hear those nice satisfying clicks. Don't use too much force. When you first start, it feels like there's no way this thing's coming off, but trust me, it will. Just go around the edges until you can lift the entire keyboard up kind of like a hinge. Don't force it up because it's attached by three cables that are attached to the motherboard. And these are very important. I'm going to show you how to remove these cables safely. This little beige part on the connector is a hinge. It lifts up. You want to lift it into the up position and then the cables will come right out no problem. Just make sure you lift up that little hinge on each of these three connectors and pop the cable comes right out. You also want to leave them up when we go to put those back in. So let me just quickly show you the cables. These are the three cables that we're dealing with. And of course, they're connected to the trackpad, the keyboard, and the power button. So let's set that aside. The hard drive is exposed and everything else, but the part that we want to concentrate on right now is this black grid, which is actually the dummy optical drive. So of course, take a screwdriver and remove the screw that holds it in slide it out. You can't just lift it out because it's held in by these rails. Personally, I think it was just a little bit underhanded of a Zeus not to make this front bezel removable that you could just put it onto any old optical drive because then you could just buy any $5 optical drive and throw it in here. Instead, I had to search and find a close enough Zeus model. I couldn't find one that was the exact model, but I chose the Zeus X55A and those are readily available. I only paid like eight bucks for it and the bezel is close enough. It's, it's good enough. It's the same color and style of plastic. It's a little little bit different in the contour but it's okay it, it looks like it halfway belongs in the laptop it's good enough one thing I also had to do was modify this little connector on the back of it I had to kind of take a pair of pliers and break it off because of this bar right here which when you try to slide it in the way it was it will block the drive from fitting all the way in there and I'm not sure which of those things is non-standard but one of them is and it's kind of annoying but it's an easy fix Make sure it goes under these rails and just slide it in. And of course, the main concern is that this SATA connector, the serial ATA port, connects firmly and the drive is actually connected in there. There's that little bar I was talking about that will block this drive in its regular form before I modified it. I also bent that little pin back just a little bit so it sits flush. Just screw it back in. I barely even need to mention that. If you don't have that little pin on the back, the drive would just be held in just by the SATA ports and it could possibly come loose. Wouldn't be a good situation, so it's good to have that pin connected in the back. Next up is the thing that I saw people were having some worries about, and that is reconnecting the keyboard connectors to the laptop. Now, once again, these little connectors pivot, so you want to make sure they're in the up position, and then that makes it easy to put them back in. If, they're, if you just leave them down and force the cables out and then try to force them back in, it is a real pain, but doing it this way, it's actually pretty easy. So you just want to kind of lay your keyboard back over on the hinges, Take your ribbon cables, and I want you to pay attention to the white line that's on this main ribbon connector here, because that line really indicates whether or not that's in the slot or not. And believe me, it'll feel like there's no way that's going in there anyway, but eventually, if you just kind of push it in there at the base of that connector, it will indeed slide in. Now you see how that white line disappears? You can't see it, you know it's in. If you see it, it's out. So when it's in, just flip that little slot hinge back over it and it's held in place. And of course you just do the others the same way. If you notice there's a black line on these smaller connectors that you can kind of use to gauge whether it's in or not also. You'll eventually get it in there. And just kind of flip that connector back over it and you're good to go. 
And of course, do the same thing with the third one, which is the power button switch. I don't need to show you again, it's the exact same thing. Now here's the thing, don't put your lid back on all the way and snap it down. First, let's turn the laptop on and make sure this thing works. Uh, you know, it would really suck to have to open it again if we connected something wrong. Okay, so obviously the laptop boots fine. My keyboard, trackpad, everything works. So I'm gonna check out the optical drive. I put a DVD in the tray, close the door. And I just installed VLC Media Player as a great free way to check and see if you can play DVDs or not. Or course, use whatever DVD software you want. Looks like DVDs work just fine. Therefore, my drive's working. Of course, you could put a Blu-ray or something in this laptop too, but the screen is not very high res. I wouldn't bother with Blu-ray. I'd just stick to DVD, but that's just me. And as long as I can play this and see it, it looks like it works fine. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this laptop off and just go around the edges and snap the keyboard back into place. Just make sure it's nice and connected. Now here's the thing with this optical drive in particular, I think it was the X55 from ASUS. You could see it doesn't quite match the contours of this laptop, but I don't really care. It looks fine. It works great. I'm guessing that if you really cared that much how this thing looks to where it's absolutely perfect, you would have bought another model of laptop that already has an optical drive that perfectly fits it. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful to any of you out there that have this same laptop without the optical drive. All you have to do is spend about 10 minutes of your time, 10 bucks or so on the optical drive and you've got an optical drive in your laptop.